hi in this tutorial i'll talk about how to create a post call in postman so first of all you must understand why do we need a post request means why do we need a http post request so there are few reasons why do you need a post request when you want to submit data as part of body when you have a different formats of data when you want to submit binary files or the binary data and when you do not want your data to be exposed as part of browser url in such cases you have to make a post request there are no other way how you can submit data so as part of this tutorial what we'll see we'll see how to create post request how to send query parameters how to send a body and we'll see how what are the headers as well so we'll see a post request as a whole we'll see how you can create and different concepts about post request so for this tutorial i'll use postman echo apis postman has its own apis to test different http requests so we'll use postman echo apis so in postman you can use query parameters what as you were using with the get request you have headers you must aware about headers i'll explain what are those and you submit actual data as part of body but there's a number of formats how you can submit as part of body so at a higher level this format means data format is derived using mime types and there are few most commonly used mime types are multi-part slash form data application form hyphen url encoded and you can send data in form of json as well so while submit data while submit form you define what kind of format your data is so you define using this content hyphen type this is a property in your request header we'll see some of the request header are added by default by the application means either you submit form or you make a request using postman or you can add your own header as well so i will explain what is the value of that content type as part of request i'll explain that while demo so this is my demo url or demo server where i will be making this post request these apis are available with postman we used to call it echo apis then this can be used for testing purpose in actual use cases you will be having your own apis so whatever the form data is the server actually write their own script to handle that data so as part of these apis for the testing what these apis does they return whatever you submitted so by that way you can see what actually you submitted to this post api and you will see what are those right like they have a specific section in response where they say whatever you what the data is actually being returned and what you submitted what are there in headers so now this is the important part right this is the post call but still you can make a query parameters query parameters means which are visible or exposed in url so in param tab you will be adding query parameters whatever you add in key value pair those will be added in your actual url actual url for that post and authorization if you have any authorization you can add those authorization here right now we are not using any authorization headers these are the headers of this request few headers are added by postman and few headers will be added by whatever the application you are submitting data with let's say you're submitting form in actual environment so those will some header will be added by that form you can manually or programmatically add your own header as well we'll see that example right now important part is this body where you submit actual data it has different sections we when you don't have any data you can choose none right but in that case let's say you don't have any data to submit it in body then it's always good to have the get call where you can submit everything in url until unless you have a specific requirement form data this is basically where how you submit the data as a form data like you have a form and you are submitting that data using form you can simulate that case using this section form data if you want to encode your data as the url encoding then you submit that data here raw data when you have any specific format let's say you want to submit a json your api means server accept json your api server accept text files your api server or whatever the server which is handling those requests except xml so you can define that here but there's a one thing here let's say 
let's say you're defining json data right you are defining a json as a payload so in this section you will see here whatever let's say this one this one here you have to define what kind of format it is let's say you are submitting uh, json so you have to set here as a json then only it will be transmitted and that then only you, this data will be encoded properly and submitted to server binary data when you have any file then you will be adding that file here let's say you want to submit some files binary data then you will be submitting that here graphql will discuss that in a separate tutorial so let's add some query parameter as soon as i add query parameter those will be added here if you see this is being added here and you can add those query parameters in bulk so to add these in bulk you can click here bulk and you can write as a free text in by separated by colon go back now these are headers some headers i itself added you can add your own header as well whenever uh, you want you can manually add it here for the testing purpose or you can add by programming in your actual where you are submitting that data in actual programming language where you actually working on it now body this is important right where let's say first i submit a key value here as a form data so I'm adding the bulk and go back. So these three has been added. So when I submit now, what should happen? It should show me two query parameters and these three form data. So let's try and see. Let me save it and let me send this. So once the, this successful, you will see the response at bottom. Here you will see the multiple tabs, body, whatever actual body is returned, cookies, if you have any cookies, headers, if you have any headers here, so you will see header separately. And the result, we'll see what is the test result. Let's focus on this body now. So pretty in, you can see this format means JSON format or response. Let's say you have some other response in a pretty file, means it's a good format. Raw, you can see the same in a raw uh, data preview. You can see in a normal and visualization. If you enabled any visualization, we see that visualization later. So let's say come here, pretty file, pretty. Now let's focus on this. So you will see in arguments, whatever we passed here, whatever the query parameter we sent, Q1 query parameter one, Q2 query parameter two. Data, we did not send anything. Files, we did not send anything. Form data, form data, what did we send? ID name and that is being returned. That means our, so this request is successful. We are able to submit that data there. The headers, whatever header we passed here. As I said, these APIs return everything, whatever you submitted for your purpose, for your testing. The content type, which is important. If you see here, the content type, you will see here content type and it is multi-part slash form data because you were submitting form data. So that, that is being added here. This is different for different format, right? If we use this encoding you will see the different if we use this uh, raw data you will find a different we'll see this example right json you see null here we'll see when we submit data where it being added now there's a one more important concept if you're using postman for this type of data means form data and this url encoding your postman add uh, content type content hyphen type header itself right it see what are type of data and it add itself in case of raw whatever let me click here whatever let's say you added whatever you choose here the content type is of that type right for binary postman does not add any content type but let's say if you add any content type manually right it's rather than postman decide what to add so whatever you added content type manually that will always take preference that will be submitted as a content type header okay that that is important okay now i'm submitting as form hyphen url encoded and i added a you know suffix hyphen url so that you can understand the previous response was this now if i make it request here let me send it and you see here the same data is returned okay there's no difference here but when i go here this content type you will see the difference here in content type right this one now now the content hyphen type is application slash this this one form hyphen url encoding so the format mime format or the data format has been changed 
so that's the big difference here that's how your server understand what kind of this data is e the server is handling with now let me send the raw data let's say your api is uh, or your server uh, expect some specific format data for example let's a uh, json so what i'm passing here id first name last name and let me add a json here so that you understand here and json json and i'm saying tutorials tutorials now you see now i'm passing a single value but in tutorial what i'm passing here is this array right so that this array is submitted and here i chose as a json right so when i save and i submit you will see here now you see the response now arguments and now you see data why data because now it is submitted as a data raw data right we don't have any specific format we submitted as a raw data and what is the type file we did not submit we did not submit any form data the important part is if you see the content type now the content type would be application json so it's saying now my the content type is json right json type so that my server can understand what is the server is getting right and here in json itself also you see the json whatever we submitted here this is json right if i change this let's say i change this now text so it will be submitted as a text data right let me even it's a json let me send it okay right now you see data see now it is submitted as a text data and if you see here the content type where see the plain text the content type is plain text here right because i added text so it's all depend when you have a specific format data you can submit using raw data right and same way you can send a file one more thing you need to understand here status so sometimes you see the status 201 or 200 2 2 slash xx means 2 dot x 2 xx are the response of success success right so it all depend what your server is returning let's say when you first time submit data so the resource is created it uh, so at that time sometimes you see 201 so for actual response please go through your actual api documentation what you are testing here so it may be 201 or 200 based on your api documentation but it will be starting from two so those are success now i hope you understood if you have any question add your comment